and there's like a mic on right. This is so cool. Hi everyone. I am Lana Wilson. I'm the educator at the Mann Art Gallery here in Prince Albert, Saskatchewan. And for the past 21 months, I was the acting director curator of the Mann Art Gallery. We're now pleased to welcome Marcus Miller as our new director curator. This has been a great time uh, that we've been having here um, at the gallery and we put in place a lot of innovations to deal with the COVID-19 pandemic. One of those things has been the project that we're going to be discussing with you today. We have Danielle Castle, the acting educator of the Man Art Gallery, and she was the apprentice to Leah Marie Dorian, who is very beloved uh, across Saskatchewan and across Canada um, as a Métis artist and a woman leader um, in the field with education, community arts and programming, and she's an inspiration to all of us. So we're really glad that you could join us virtually today as we clo close the Intergenerational Métis Mentorship Project with this online presentation. The final component to this project that we're ordering today um, is a photo book. This will serve as an exhibition catalog for the projects that happen all across Prince Albert this summer. As you know, Prince Albert and the Man Art Gallery are located on Treaty 6 territory. That is the homeland of the Métis Nation and traditional territory of Cree and Dakota people. And one of the things that we have been trying to do at the Man Art Gallery is to incorporate more Indigenous content uh, into our programming. And we are so blessed to have so many talented artists uh, who are Indigenous who can share teachings and cultural values and inspiration and worldview with us. So please join me in welcoming these two artists. We are very grateful for the funding that has been provided for this project. We have so many incredible sponsors of the Man Art Gallery as a whole, but the particular sponsors for this project were Saskatchewan Lotteries uh, through a SAS Culture Program. That's the Aboriginal Arts and Culture Leadership Grant. We are incredibly grateful for the financial support of the City of Prince Albert, as well as the support of city officials who were able to help us do this public art outside, mostly um, on uh, city land, and helped us facilitate uh, that across the city this summer. So thank you, City of Prince Albert. And we're also grateful for the ongoing support of the Community Initiatives Fund as the major sponsor of the education program at the Man Art Gallery. So please join me as we celebrate this project, as we speak to the artists, as we learn about how a series of workshops with Leah Dorian over the past year turned into an artist residency, uh, how they developed the mentorship program idea to promote skill sharing among Indigenous women through this mentorship project, and how we chose to do outdoor art as a way to bring art to the people during the COVID pandemic this summer when we didn't know if galleries could reopen. So join me in welcoming Danielle Castle and Leah Marie Dorian and learning about the Intergenerational Métis Mentorship Project. Thank you everyone for your support. Thank you, Lana. Oh, hey. Well, I guess, are we ready to go? All right. Yeah. Well, hi, Danny. It's so <laughs> nice to kind of close the door. So uh, thank you, Lana, for such a wonderful introduction to set the stage for this great project that uh, Danielle Castle and I have done this summer. We um, really feel in the Métis cultural value system that explaining and reflecting upon what you've done and telling that story at the end is a huge part of the way of being Métis. And we felt that we wanted to build in a community uh, presentation at the end of the project, which is kind of new to me. I haven't really done that a lot, Danielle. Yeah, I've never closed a project with a presentation either. Um, I think it's a really good idea too, because then we can share, you know, how your residency became a bigger project and you're able to pass on knowledge to me. It's just a great opportunity that we we're able to do. And now we can take what both of us have learned and share it with everyone else and show how it's important to have an artist residency and how it's important to have these mentorships and 
to just, you know, have these connections. Yeah, absolutely. And it's so interesting because of my age and your age being, you know, quite a difference. I was able to be comfortable with technology. Like here we are live streaming today and we're going to show this beautiful PowerPoint that has been features the photography done through all my relations photography. So I say we just start sort of use the PowerPoint. What do you think? Absolutely. As a way to tell the story. So why don't we just bring up the PowerPoint here and, and let's do it. Okay. Go ahead, Daniela. Uh, so I guess maybe I should introduce myself a little bit yeah. here too. Yeah. Uh, my name is Danielle Castle. Uh, currently I'm the acting gallery educator at the Man Art Gallery. Um, before that, I did a lot of contract work and worked with the Prince Albert Art Center. And I also um, did a lot of work at the co-op community Oasis Garden. So Leah and I have had chances to work together before. And then I started working here and she was doing these workshops that turned into a mini residency because of Leah's commitment to the gallery and we were able to build on that. So this opportunity has been so fulfilling for me as an artist. Not only do I learn how to be a professional artist from you, I also learn what it takes to make these projects happen. So I've been doing all the admin tasks and the artist tasks and it's like such a well-rounded experience for me as an artist and as a person and as a meaty woman. It's been wonderful to watch you grow because I remember when first media interview we did and how nervous you were. And then at the end, I was like, just go talk to Danielle. Don't yeah. interview me. I'm done. She's got this. You know, it was so nice because, you know, you were able to step to the plate and handle that media and just be so beautifully vocal. So I got to see that wonderful growth process. Yes, I definitely did a lot of growing. So this project, um, was created when Lee and I were meeting one day to discuss how we could engage the community and do art and pass on cultural teachings in a safe way during the pandemic. And it was Leah's idea, actually. She's like, you know, why don't I mentor you and we can do outdoor art. I'm already experienced with this and it will be a great project. And next thing you know, we're doing it. We did it and we put it together with the whole current reality of COVID. So we, you'll see on the screen here, um, we pick locations where there was fresh air, be able to be socially distant and have public watching us from a safe distance as we installed art. So we did this wonderful recon as we drove all over our city. We did teachings in my truck. We literally got Tim Hortons and we drove around and we looked for places that were visible, accessible, and ensured social distancing. And then had that good artistic vibe. Eh? You had to have like something that's unseen, emotional, intuitive, spiritual. Mm -hmm. So there's a great picture. Daniel took a lot of these pictures on recon. So we had the show we so we could sell the the staff at the man art gallery where we're going to install and the things. city and the, the city, city was too. really supportive of the places that we picked they agreed you know with the mm -hmm. easy accessibility with the high visibility and with it being out in the open that the places that we ended up picking yeah. were perfect. perfect they just worked out so well yep so at the alfred jenkins that's where we built the will labyrinth mm -hmm. so there was plenty of space for that you can see leah in the field and alfred yeah. jenkins in the background and you'll get to see the installation photos down later as we go through our project so kinsman park is one of our uh glorious projects locations we chose a tree those of you who followed my um, publishing career, you know that The Giving Tree was one of my most popular children's books published by Gabriel Dumont Institute, and we used it to springboard the project. And I remember Danny, our conversation about what should we do? And I was like, we pulled out all my books and then we're like, a live giving tree. Because mm -hmm. we talked about the land. Hey, how do we make the land and make living art and have be outside in this time making art to inspire the public? Because mm -hmm. I don't know about you, Danny, but I felt I needed to be creative during this COVID situation. Me too. The project really helped save me mentally and emotionally. And we built a bond together. Like we were able to work so beautifully together and be creative and inspire our community with yes. what we made. And we, we did. We yeah. did do that. We did it. <laughs> did it. So the Art Hauser Center, um, we wanted to pick a, a location that had lots of wind. Well, oh. I asked for wind, we did. and we got wind. 
<laughs> so bad. It was a great location for the project that we wanted. Um, it was a really good learning experience because that install only stayed up for like 24 hours. Um, but we definitely were successful. We had the worst windstorm we had that summer. 80 kilometer an hour plus winds. Can you believe that? Um, we asked for wind. We, we got wind. wind. <laughs> Unreal. Unbelievable. Never saw that one coming. Um, the 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 riverbank one was like such a natural decision, especially with the interpretive yeah. block that just got yeah. installed. And yeah. Leah did a lot of work on that yeah. too, and like supplied the art. Yeah. So we didn't take a picture of that recon. It was just so yeah. natural. It's natural. like, no, this is where our install is gonna go. It's gonna go with this interpretive block with yeah. the signs. And then it also helped draw attention to that new piece of Prince Upper. I know, I can't wait till we show those. So we're going to the first install here. Um, this was the first of the project. We did five outdoor art installations, public art installations. This is the one right outside the Man Art Gallery. You can see the Man Art Gallery canopy tent with the logo. And we used pastel and we used pastels and we actually used the book. There's the Giving Tree book. And we took the cultural values and we used the cartwheel and we made, because the Man Art Gallery has a natural cartwheel in the concrete. It was like, yep. wasn't that an unbelievable match? And then we took the Mady values and put them on every spoke and we did this. And there's a beautiful example of, we had people come out, um, they stayed behind the, the line. Uh, we worked hard. Yeah, we <laughs> my did. knees were sore. Those, that, that couple hours went by in like a blur. It was amazing. And the, the, the people that came out, I want to give you a huge shout out. Thank Absolutely. you so much for respecting our space and everyone else's space. People were wearing masks. People were also um, happy to engage us. They encouraged us. Yes. They were like, we wish we could help you, but it was going. very, very, <laughs> yes. We had a lot of support and, and, and it just went so smoothly and it set the pace for the rest of our installs because the rest of the installs yeah. were just and we Sealed. had a following of community people that would come out regularly to observe families, elders, elderlicity. I didn't think she missed any of them. Yeah, <laughs> yep. Thank Her, you, elderlicity. And Curtis Breton was the other major elder supporter who really opened with prayer, closed with prayer. And, you know, he really has been behind this project right from the get go, helping us in every way. Yeah. And both him and Liz just really helped us. The Métis cultural guidance. That exactly. We need, we need that. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Um, and Curtis made us special tools. He for did. The installs, <laughs> which um, were very handy, and I have no idea how we would have done. We couldn't have. Yeah, we couldn't, we have. couldn't have. So huge thank you to Elder Curtis because <laughs> yes. those tools work so well. Um, there's a picture of them in the slide, yeah. and you can see um, how the stakes that we used to hammer into the ground started to become squished. Because mm -hmm. of all the pounding mm -hmm. that was going on, it was amazing. Um, so our second install was the Living Giving Thank Tree. You. This was um, definitely one of my favorites. Um, I spent like a week crafting these bubbles of love mm -hmm. with the Métis values in them. And I just got to exercise all my creative muscles because I threw different media onto them. There was buttons on them to help keep them weighted down. Yeah. So you might think that it's, you know, for the aesthetic, but there's also practical, there's purpose. practical purpose to us putting the weighted things on these bubbles of love. Yeah. And um, they were just used with um, bristle board. Mm -hmm. And then I sprayed them and they lasted for weeks. They lasted almost the whole time it was truly Unreal. incredible so you learn through your experimenting too i've come to learn that every outdoor project i've done over the years danielle you just it's also field research because you don't know what's gonna, how nature's going to take things what it's going to do and i would definitely do the wind horses differently yeah mm -hmm. and more securely like our bison herd like mm -hmm. i just we but you learn right? yeah you mm -hmm. learn but it looked beautiful there's some beautiful photography by all my relations photography uh we did haul ladders we were we were visible we had people stopping it was a on a walking path and a playground and the paddling pool was open because mm -hmm. it was just starting to open and we had people just come from a distance sit up put a blanket down and visit and encourage us cheer us on and uh 
we had a whole team of elders that day. Yes, Five we had a elders. whole team of elders. It was absolutely amazing. Yeah. Their support was so nice. And having them sit in their long far chairs. away, yeah. they were giving us the feedback. They're like, yeah. oh, it looks really good like that. Because yeah. we weren't just tying things to a tree or putting things on the tree. Yeah. We had to create it. A balance yeah there there is a lot more thought that went into this than you might yeah. think like we were up and down those ladders constantly yeah. and changing position and being like oh no this ribbon doesn't go here we gotta put it it's over true. here but we also really wanted to honor the grandmother yeah. tree and we had a whole lot of grandmother elders I think Curtis was the only male elder we had Joanna Potiondi from down south who very well respected 81 years old Métis woman elder we had Miss City we had Vivian Mabry from St. Louis area so we we're just honestly the grandmothers came out to them. yes we, and it was safe over COVID because everyone was able to social distance people that belong yeah. in their bubbles could just stay in their bubbles and watch. Their bubble and watch and we got to engage so many people on this day it was a busy day in that park it really was it really was unexpected we had so many wonderful um, unexpected people who many knew we were doing it and others didn't. Yeah, they had no idea. So it was like, what is going on at that tree? So we really got the public talking. Yeah. And we really made an impact. Yeah, it was it was such a good way to facilitate Meaty culture. It, really same way. Was. it, really it was, was very fulfilling. Um, our next project was oh, the yes. Willow Labyrinth. I love, the, I love working with Willow. This was definitely one of my favorite installs. Working with the Lil Willow was it's a lot of physical work. I, I, there's just no word for Willow. I've always worked with Willow um, because of my um, my land-based artistic practice. Willow in the Métis community is what we call cultural keystone species. It's foundational to traditional Métis um, culture. It provided so much. So for me, when I first started working in Willow, I just felt connected to my culture, my ancestors, and my people. That's exactly this, how I felt. And <laughs> medicinal. Ooh, you can't go hold a branch like without smelling that fresh willow aroma. Mm -hmm. And when your hands are working with it, bending it, it's just phenomenal. Yeah, yeah. and another shout out to Elder Curtis for being there, for doing the offerings yeah. and the prayers so we could work with the willow. And the willow just worked with us. It um, did. We had a good team, you can see in this photo. Uh, assistant educator Ethan Walner mm -hmm. came out to help that day too. We harvested like 200 trees. Yep. 200 willow Sustainably. trees. Sustainably. Yeah. Sustainably. Um, there's a huge willow patch um, actually near the Alfred Jenkins and it was just calling to us. It yes. worked out perfectly because it was so close to the location as well. That was amazing because I had been, you had known Danny, I had went out for days scouting willow in the region and it is just getting so not there anymore. I was getting panicky. I didn't want to go way 100 kilometers away to get willow. Mm -hmm. And I was literally praying. We did put tobacco down. And then sure enough, I just took the route one day between where the PAGC uh, was urban reserve is and, and those new apartments and I took that little street and there was a crop. I went, oh my God, I think I phoned you right away. Yep. I found it. Yep. And you won't believe it's two blocks away from the Yeah, like, and so. like a huge crop. Like we, we harvested like the 200 willows and there was like not even a dent. It Isn't that it wonderful the way we were able to harvest it so sustainably and that, that will help those trees that stayed behind will go thicker, stronger. And so willow is kind of like likes attention and it likes sustainable harvest. And it puts, when you take some of it respectfully, it puts more into its existing bush mm -hmm. and it goes healthier. Yes. If it's done sustainable, which we did. Mm -hmm. And for this, all we used was the willow trees, um, the you twine, twine yeah. and um, ribbon and cloth. And granite cloth. Yeah, granite yes. cloth. It was like such few materials. Um, you know, huge shout out too to the boys again. They did yeah. the majority of the state theme for that one, which was oh, really nice. Oh my gosh, this is where those tools came in handy for the hard ground. The ground was hard. We hadn't had a lot of rain at this point too, so it was super extra hard. Yeah. And the tools that we used to pre-punch the holes to pound and stake in the willow, it was just a lot of work. So Louie and Curtis, my son Louie, 17 years young, very healthy, pounded a lot of holes that day and saved us from being really sore. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah, that brings me to the point too of one of the cool parts of this project is normally for like as an artist and 
art educator like me and even you, we work a lot with the community and groups yeah. of people. So bringing in like my family to help, yeah. It, they got to see how passionate I am about what I do and then yeah. it made them passionate about helping too because yeah. typically I wouldn't ask my friends and family to help me with but we had to keep our bubble small yeah so we, we had to, to keep our bubble so small we picked everybody from our households as volunteers whether they liked it or not yeah we could not recruit community volunteers mm -hmm. really we, we picked so our poor little bubbles were you know they had but they loved it everybody in my family household they were in my art It project, was so. such a cool experience. It, yeah. was, it was a really refreshing change. And like this Willow Labyrinth that we did, it, there was only the five of us. We put it up in two hours. Yeah, it was a lot of work. Uh, but I, I just can't <laughs> but imagine. But it did two hours. Yeah, two hours. So if we had like 10 people. We would have went. And a day. It, yes, I'm very excited for the future. Oh, I, <laughs> very, that, and very I've excited. done ones with like I don't have to, like I can do in an extended time and you can be so elaborate. It can be. Amazing. Mm -hmm. Amazing. And the best thing about these is that they were temporary. Yes. So yes. we both already knew, like, you know, these are not going to last forever. Yeah. We, we can be creative and, yeah. like, we're going to know where they're going to go. And then it, like, gives us the creative juices to yeah. implement more in the future. I know. I want to. Because we can take it out and put a new one in. Yeah. yeah. I think we've opened a door for the city to consider. Uh, we had lots of conversations with community members. And one of the reoccurring comments was, Boy, pop-up art is nice in Prince Albert. We've never seen that much in the summer. We know the Winter Festival has those beautiful snow sculptures pop up all over. But they're like, wow, what you're doing might open a door. So we're hoping the city of Prince Albert and the Man Art Gallery will consider little pop-up areas in these locations possibly. Yeah. And, and give them that new identity as pop-up sites. Yeah. So I think that's one takeaway for me is we're helping our city develop clear agendas mm -hmm. by practicing these pilot projects. Absolutely. And if it would have fallen flat, then we, I guess we just know that it yeah, it wouldn't be something that was that we were able to do or the city was able they're to just do or something ready. that wasn't sustainable. Yeah, but it's so changed. we found out it will work and it, we support it. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we've been so grateful. Um on the slide you can see the tools. Mm -hmm. So those metal tools um were <laughs> created just for yeah. the staking. So we would take the hammer and then like stake it into the metal piece and then that goes into the ground. And then that gave us the hole where we could put, you know, the willow and the buffalo the, yeah, and the horses. The um, these tools were just so necessary. Three installs, they were pushed to the limit. Yep. Yeah. So you can see the one that's like closer. <laughs> it's uh, really tiny and that's because of all the pounding that was done and the one behind it, it's still not that bad yeah it's still not that so bad. you can tell that the other one might have been used more by you know curtis and louis yeah yeah, <laughs> yeah. 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 contemporary metis tool right? yeah yeah this is a contemporary made by metis used by metis oh it's such a great yeah absolutely um the metis buffalo install was also a really awesome one we actually yes. got to do a workshop we did finally mm -hmm. so shout out to the ywca and their group who painted yep. buffalo with us um we couldn't have done it without your help and yep. the the having the youth add their own expression to it yeah. really made the buffalo vibrant and interesting and fun to look at. It really did. And you know, honestly, wow. Could you imagine if we had to do every bison ourselves? Like that would have just been, and look what having the kids help out and contribute. Look how beautiful all of them, the herd is. There's the creator and the 12 Métis values that come from the giving tree interpreted by Danny, myself and the YWCA kids from the painting workshop we did which was so nice because we could lay them out each kid went to their own buffalo it was like we were even able to social distance and have everyone work on their own it just worked out yeah it was really <laughs> nice because then we did get to get the community involvement that, that we all and i wanted yeah. yes because it just it's nice to have the expression of other people yes. in the artwork. I really, yeah. really love it. The Buffalo um, were so nice. I got so much good feedback about so them. So did I. Um, you could see them so well from the street. Yeah. Which they is were, exactly what we wanted. We wanted them to be yeah. visible so people would, you know, would catch their eye and then they'd go down and then they'd be able to look at the signs that were just installed. Yeah. That, you know, it, it talks about the history of our city. I love this picture that she took the photographer because you really can capture how they really became part of for the weeks they were up 
they really became part of PA's riverbank story and the herds running towards the museum. It would have been the old, the buffalo used to winter here and come here for drinking. Um, they would just gather, feed, drink from the river. And it was a big part of the buffalo and that's what brought the Métis and the First Nations here regularly. So having our little herd, you know, really brought back that Métis history of the region. And I just think it was just a beautiful install I really enjoyed it. A lot of work to yes. make the figurines, but well worth it. It was very worth it. Um, Leah and I, if you guys might have noticed, we recently did another workshop. Um, we invited people to sign up and register for this workshop and come work on the bison. Yeah, it was so, so popular. I made a whole new set. What was I thinking? <laughs> I'm dreaming. So Buffalo. much work. But it's going to be so worth it. And um, it was really interesting having such a diverse group for this latest workshop. Yes. Because, yeah. like, the, the art just really is diversified. Yeah. And um, we're, yeah. we're both pretty excited to install that next so, spring, so summer. We, so we made a whole another set of 12 figurines. And we're hoping to make an install next summer and really keep the momentum going. Um, so we'll keep everyone posted to see what happens with that. Mm -hmm. So who would have thought a project that just keeps opening new doors? And, and it's a great educational tool. It's um, yeah. the, the buffalo itself. We can talk about the Métis values, what the Ooh. buffalo symbolize. We talk about Métis symbols that the people put yeah. on to the buffalo. So like not only are we creating this beautiful art, but we're able to facilitate the education that goes yeah, with keep it. Keep our cultural values uh, alive mm -hmm. and, and uh, people aware of them. And then we live them as we do art. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I love that picture. Me too. <laughs> we had a beautiful visit by those eagles. I almost missed the eagles that day. We got yes. blessed with these beautiful eagles mm -hmm. flying. And I almost missed it. I was so busy chatting that every, Liz, the elder, turn around quick. Yeah, got, there's an eagle. Yeah. It was amazing. Yet again, we had an awesome little group that came out. Everyone yeah. stayed distant. Um, so people relaxed. wearing their masks. Bringing their own lawn chairs and blankets. That was so nice too. Mm -hmm. yeah. So by the time we had this install going up, we had a little following. We did, we did. It was truly amazing. And I thank you guys for coming out yes. and supporting us. Um, that was the whole idea, you know, to show people how we're making this art and then installing it, yeah. you know, cause this is something you could do in your own yard. I absolutely agree. I'm going to make a tree for myself in my yard. Yes. <laughs> yes. Oh my gosh, the wind horses. So the wind horses, this brings us the to finale. the final install. <laughs> it was a pretty crazy five weeks. <laughs> it was a busy five weeks. So worth it. So fulfilling. I had so much fun. Um, this one was really cool too. Um, during the install, we were actually gifted traditional yes. Métis gifts from a family that had been following us. Right and from the beginning. Mm -hmm. yeah. it, it, it just it was a really nice to conclude the project. And you know, yet again, thank you guys yeah. for coming out um, and respecting us and respecting the people around yeah. you. Yeah, good energy, very nice visiting because one of the Métis ways is visiting and, and you know, learning from each other. Mm -hmm. That is a gorgeous picture of the wind. Now, it was already starting to get windy the day we installed. <laughs> and, yep. And that night, it literally went to 85, eight, above 80 kilometer hour wind. So we had a pretty hard night there. But it really did for the time it was up. It was just people. It was probably our most visible Absolutely. because of the location we chose. Um, so we had hawks and uh, the skate park was really close so there was everybody seeing it so yet it w had a short duration of install it had a huge impact for the time it was up we picked a really really great location yeah. um the horses were really fun to play with and experiment with and make uh we tried you know the survey tape and yeah. incorporating fans and like um we you know, really wanted to put an emphasis on yeah. the Métis cultural values. And the language. We actually, one of the things um, I encouraged, because I knew that we'd have a double-sidedness to them, uh, we put the Michif language, because Michif is an endangered language. And I wanted Danny to get a feel for the working with our Michif heritage language. And so we actually did one side English and the other side the Michif. So it was Danny's first time working with Mitch and yes. Mitch, and we got to showcase it. So I'd like to see more um, integration of Mitch of language in future art projects that we do. Cause I think that really had a, that really people were like, what is that on the other side? Like they didn't know what language. So we did a lot of public education mm -hmm. with the Mitch of language, which was, I didn't really 
expect that to be one of the results, but it was a an yeah, it was a consequence. Yes, and it was just so good. I know. Um, definitely, after doing these installs and working with the values on every install, mm -hmm. really drilled it into my own head. <laughs> yeah. So I'm like really excited to keep expanding and growing off it. Though now that it's just like so a part of my being, it, it is it's like no, I just need to keep sharing it, sharing yeah. it, and giving it, and sharing it. So um, this project was just so fulfilling to me as an artist and as a Métis woman. Both, eh? We got both beautiful ways of being covered in mm -hmm. one art project. Who yeah. Uh, it was the, the so as you can see in the picture, like it was so windy, <laughs> yeah, so windy. Um, you can see some of the horses too are our, starting our, to are wavering. Like I said, I did the design so double stake them next time. Yeah, it learn. was a huge learning experience, and working with wind is something we'll Ooh, definitely do I'm again. On too. We didn't. I had bigger plans, but I'm glad we kept it simple with the the way we did it. Mm -hmm. Um, it was just a really awesome day. Finally wrapping up the project yeah. and the install. As you can see in the picture, we're just like, yeah, we wore <laughs> ribbon skirts. Um, we both, I have done, one of the things at the Man Art Gallery, I really work with uh, Lana, uh, the, she was the uh, curator at the time, and before that, she was the gallery educator. Yes, and Lana's going to be moving back into her educator position yes. here now that the new director, Marcus, has started. And, and when I worked with Lana, I said, really, sewing in the Métis community, women's arts is really taking off again, but they're not sure of the Métis designs and I'd really like to work with preserving those because I think they're really endangered and so working with the Man Art Gallery to do some sewing um, workshops was so nice because we got to wear our skirts and showcase our Métis style ribbon skirt in with the single ruffle high plane style mm -hmm. and and it was just nice to wear our skirts because normally we're working so hard and we just don't have the ability to wear our our skirts which are a big part of our traditional identity mm -hmm. so we actually put them on at the end and celebrated and and you know brought our skirts that day to to ground ourselves to the earth and to yeah. the teachings. And um, Elder Lissati, she was there too, and she, was she wearing, wore her skirt. She wore her ribbon skirt too, yeah. yeah. Um, all my relations captured our project so beautifully. Mm -hmm. And like the, the pictures of the last install with us in our ribbon skirts was just perfect, especially against the stark background of the store. You could see it coming in. It was yes. like, what great light, like as a, a artist, that kind of light showcased things so beautifully. Mm -hmm. oh. Having a professional photographer on this project was definitely vital. She was, it was. able to capture everything. Um, nor, like even with us working together, yeah. it was still hard to take, find the time to take pictures. I took the odd cell shot just for my, so I could look at that night before we got her photos sent to us. Mm -hmm. But I really find I've learned over the years to dedicate a photographer, build it in the budget, honestly, because I too, I, I need 1800 hands when I do projects. So she went on doing the leadership because I know I done the design and know how it works. I've done it previous and you've got people who've never done it. So you have to be clear you don't have time to take photos mm -hmm. and having a dedicated professional photo document, I think is one of the greatest things about this budget. Mm -hmm. We built it in and yeah. I'm just now I'm, I'm not turning back on that. I want to build it into every project. I yes, do it, it, it's so yeah. worth it. And then you have these awesome visuals that you can show your success with. Yeah. That is one of That's, the most important things. Like you yeah. want to be able to share your success. Right. Yeah. And it's hard when it's just a selfie. <laughs> Yeah, it doesn't <laughs> capture what she's been able to capture from her, her wonderful eye that she has. So that was really, for me, a fulfilling thing to see a professional and work with a professional photographer. Mm -hmm. So really, the project did employ a lot of people. It kept a lot of people working in the arts this summer. Because I was a little worried, like, what am I going to do <laughs> in the mm -hmm. summer in the arts? Like, yeah. I'm usually busy, but there was nothing coming in. And when this came, it was just such a, a wonderful relief that I could be a practicing artist in my community in a beautiful, safe, planned way. And we planned it, the whole thing with these conditions. Yeah. And, and, and yeah. And these, that's that's why we it. created the whole project, right? Yeah, that was to and, enjoy. And, and, and it was so successful, and I'm so so glad we got to do it. Um, you know, with COVID, it has been hard, especially in the arts. 
has you know ever. and this was still like beginning of covid it so really was. you know um i'm just really happy our project was successful Me we were too. able to engage people and like by doing this outdoor we engaged so yes many so we can do outdoor arts wonderfully it was actually i can't think of a better time to do our outdoor installation fresh air sunshine vitamin d space you know i just it was the ideal plan project mm -hmm. yeah and for me because I am such a studio practicing artist I do a lot of indoor workshops it was a treat for me to do the artistic practice outside which I've always had in my practice but I didn't make it as much of a priority last summer I lived it the yeah. outdoor artist installer I loved mm -hmm. it yeah me too um it's definitely something I've never done before this was yeah. totally new territory to me and I also fell in love with it and I'm really mm -hmm. excited to keep doing things in the future um it's just nice to have that that beauty and that positivity and we kept and... it simple like we didn't go like make glorious you know made out of wood we used corrugated cardboard and primed it and painted with like simple things simple mediums but made really eye-catching installations mm -hmm. with very, very, very accessible, local, affordable inst uh, materials. Yes, so um, shout out to, to the businesses who uh, donated their cardboard to yes, us. Yes, thank um, you. The Brick, uh, they gave us a lot of nice cardboard. Um, it's nice cardboard to work with because furniture comes thicker, in it. Thicker, so it's yeah. a lot thicker mm -hmm. and uh, more durable. Um, that was other things that we learned was like how to use not these materials. all cardboard is the same oh my god I have now I've worked with like so much cardboard this summer I have come to understand what makes good cardboard for projects like this absolutely I didn't know before it was that diverse cardboard now mm -hmm. I know yeah now I know and it's it's a really good material to use because we're already recycling it right? I know and because of these installs being temporary, um, it wouldn't make sense to, you know, pay the, the money to someone to cut out the wood and yeah. pay for the wood or the, yeah. the metal or so using these kind of materials was definitely the best way to go um, between weather and traffic. You don't know. What's and vandalism, you don't know. And that's OK. You know, yeah. we, we were fine. We, we, we're, ex we're expecting that. And we had such a low the wind did more damage than any human. Yes, the wind. Um, our, our buffalo install, though, has such an interesting story oh behind it. So one of our buffalo actually wandered from the herd. And um, yeah. yeah, someone told me, I actually, um, my brother, he uh, lives like right across the street. Mm -hmm. So he was our protector. He was. So thank you, Laren, so much. Um, but no, one day one of the buffalo just this wandered away. And uh, people were calling me and Leah. They're like, "Oh, did you know Buffalo's gone?" And then there was a drama. <laughs> there was some drama, and then and then my brother called me. He's like, "Oh, you replaced the Buffalo." I'm like, no. I'm like, maybe Leo went and replaced and the I, buffalo. She called me. I'm like, I didn't replace no buffalo. I so we we from. went and checked it out, and the buffalo returned. Yeah, one leg short. The yeah, one short. leg short. But he was there. Mm -hmm. And um, someone actually offered us um, 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 a painted rock medicine. Yeah, yeah. we put them at each um, side. So that was really nice. I don't know who you are, mystery person, but thank you so much. Yeah, was that nice? It was a really, really nice thing to see. And it was awesome to see people interacting with the install. Because they interact well for the whole time they were up. We don't know how many actual people really did see them and interact mm -hmm. they were up. And that's the beauty with COVID is you could come when there's nobody else there at the park and go look at it on your own terms and not rush. Yeah. So yeah. That's the beauty of these. They could be, you didn't have to enter a building and you could just wander by on your own in your own way, mm -hmm. in a safe way, which yeah. is so perfect. Yeah, and we shared um, so much on social media too. We did. Um, that was a huge game changer because we had people from other cities and they other They followed us in Saskatoon. I couldn't believe I had people from Saskatoon following us. It was wonderful. It was so cool. And that was one of the big aspects of this project too because it's important for us to collect feedback. Yeah. And during COVID, that's kind of complicating, and I can't just hand out a survey to every no. single person that comes to the installs, right? So we use social media to get the feedback from people to say mm -hmm. for them to say what they were thinking and feeling, yeah. and like they're asking, they're like, "When's the next install? Where's it going to be?" Absolutely, it was, it was really cool because we still got to connect. We did, we did. I can't believe what we were able to accomplish with having no. We're like we were going week by week, day by day, not knowing what circumstances so we had to be ready and i i honestly say we did a really good 
job, mm -hmm. really good job. It was um, to be able to practice arts under these conditions was just tremendous, tremendous leadership development too, because we had to manage a crowd. We had to manage our little bubble of helpers mm -hmm. like from our own bubbles. And we did it and mm -hmm. we did it well. And everyone was healthy and happy with the yes. install. Yes. Was, um, that was the key. Um, good mental health experience it really did pick my mental health up for sure. Mm -hmm. For sure. Mm -hmm. Well, that was the idea. We wanted to bring happy. That was amazing. Did it. Bubbles of love. Bubbles happy of love. Bison, yeah. Know? Bright colors. Yeah. So thank you everyone who supported yes. us this summer. It was so great to have a little following and to have people come and interact with the installs. Um, yeah, it was, it was really great. I'm uh, so excited to see what the future has to bring. Me too, me too. So uh, is that it for the PowerPoint or do we have- I think so. Um, yeah, and I want to give a huge shout out to Peter Lozitsky for helping us run this live stream today. He is the one that is uh, yes. working the PowerPoint and making sure things are streaming on both things. Um, thank you so much for volunteering your Saturday and helping us today. So Super cute. appreciated. Um, it, it's the COVID has really changed things. I don't know much about technology, but I sure do now. <laughs> We've learned a lot and we're actually making an exhibition catalog with our beautiful photography. And we're just making these things with all these digital platforms. We've live streamed today and um, we hope to keep using the technology to t share our art form um, and find that balance between doing it and then sharing it. And, mm -hmm. and we have to do it this way, we're gonna do it. But what a learning curve for someone like me who never even took a Zoom call until six months ago yep. and didn't even do social media. This is so, so true. I, yeah. I, I, my curve has been heavy, but thank you community members for encouraging us to do that and, mm -hmm. and supporting it through those digital um, mediums and coming out with your body and your being and your support. Mm -hmm. that, that's wonderful. So two audiences, we had a, a, a virtual and we had a live audience. So we got the best of both. Yeah, it, 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 it it's such a un, unexpected successful result. Yeah, because we were able to like double our engagements yeah. by sharing it online and by doing it in person outside. It, it I didn't expect us to have so much momentum I really did. We had no idea what doors they were opening. So thank you, everyone. Thank you to the Man Art Gallery and all the staff and to the funding agents because it's the funding that really allowed us to use our, our, our resources mindfully and in a good way. And it was definitely, we utilized everything. Mm -hmm. Definitely. And like, uh, I just noticed through COVID, everyone's been so understanding and supportive. Yes. Even our funders and yes. even the people that we have to interact with because you know, we're not so tech savvy and yeah. like there might be a typo or something, but like, Everyone has been so mm -hmm. understanding. It is so relieving, you know, because we're all learning. We're all learning right now. Yeah. Um, what time are we looking at? Those are really good. It is 1.44. Oh, perfect. Oh, my That's goodness. We all right. That is usually <laughs> like, it's, it's yeah, totally. Okay. Um, I guess maybe we'll take a couple minutes to answer any quick questions yeah. in the chat. If anyone has yeah. any questions, now would be your yeah. time, please. Um, so I guess we'll just wait. To see if anyone has anything to ask. Absolutely, any chat questions. And um, in the meantime, Danny, if you were to, one thing that you took away, a personal artistic goal, what would that be? What, what kind of goal did you achieve or what kind of artistic My, skill? honestly, um, from what I've learned, the biggest thing is to just do it. And um, it's made me really put a perspective on what my art is about. And it made me realize that my art is heavily inspired by the strong women around me. Mm -hmm. And that's where I get a lot of my inspiration and influence from. And finally realizing that perspective, it's put me in a direction of my artwork. And I know where I want to go. And I have so many ideas yes. that I'm starting to execute. Yes. Beautiful. Good. Any questions? <laughs> That's wonderful because, um, you know, that's the beauty too of, for me is to be able to develop leadership skills. I've always believed in it because we have a cultural teaching. If you have a gift, a knowledge set, a skill, 
you need to pass it forward. And that's why we have this intergenerational concept because it's a Métis cultural value. You have to take what you know and gift it to someone younger or we're in essence losing our culture. And I've been told that and I've been gifted myself from older generations before me. And if I don't pass what I know, that's kind of considered hoarding and greed. Mm -hmm. And so for me to be able to execute um, through a project like this, a transfer of knowledge, I'm in heaven. Yeah. Um, I'm, I, happy I'm, girl. I'm <laughs> so grateful for this experience. Um, growing up, I never really got to experience any culture. Mm -hmm. And it wasn't until I started becoming a woman that I'm like, I really need to, I need to know more. I need, I want to be more involved. Like I'm tired of wandering around. I need to be with my community. Your community, especially being a mom, eh? It really changes everything. You mm -hmm. really realize how much you've got to pass to your child now too. And you want to gift them their inheritance and be matey that's part of that child's inheritance. So mm -hmm. parents relearning with their kids, right? Mm -hmm. The Métis culture. Absolutely. And I'm all for that, man. You know that. <laughs> you have been like I'm such an understanding that. and supportive mentor. And of course, because like you've gone through what I've gone through I too. Know. It's just an ideal relationship. Really yes. I'm very grateful. Uh, is there anything coming up? We do have a question. Yes. Um, the question have... says, which install made you ladies feel the strongest connection to your Métis roots? It was definitely the Willow Labyrinth for me. Wow, yeah. Um, doing it so traditionally and respectfully and like um, actually becoming involved with the Willow Nation, mm -hmm. that changed yes. me on a whole new level. And I, it, yes, the Willow Labyrinth for me, hands yeah. down. It's just amazing to be in the Grove, eh? And, and it, it's space, it's sacred space. I don't know. I'm again, I'm like a big mama bear and everything is my baby. Like every install is my baby and I love them all equally and differently. And so they're all a special place and they all taught me something. Um, that's the beauty of this project. It was so diverse. Like, you know, we're going from figurines, working with wind to willow, but again, a willow, it just, again, like you said, because the aroma, and the medicines that you got in that particular install, you came away feeling energized and, and, and that aroma alone and the tactile of feeling the grain in the wood and, and even the juice kind of lingered from the cup. Absolutely, wood. yeah. Um, so that's a special one. That really connects. That connects for sure. The other question in the chat is whether there's plans for any future art installations. We sure hope so. Um, yes. It takes planning, it takes funding, um, but like after doing this this summer, like we said, um, you know, I think we really did create a momentum for the city to see that, you know, um, what we can do with the Winter Festival, we could do during the summer too. We could, you know, yeah. we could have people doing these temporary art installments. And, and I stuff think like they're that. going to be, um, Jesse is doing a survey and about like artist residencies in the future in the city. And I think there's going to be opportunity um, having a plan, like kind of a new artist uh, engagement plan with the city that the Man Art Gallery Lana set on some committees. And I think we're going to see that there's going to be maybe a little more directed plan to always have some kind of visual arts public presence. Yes. And so speaking from like the gallery's perspective, having Leah work with us here has created such amazing community-based programming and people are just constantly asking mm -hmm. for it. And they're not just necessarily coming to learn how to sew, they're coming for the whole experience because you get the cultural teachings with it too. Like, thank you so much, Leah. Um, and like, they just started building and people just started wanting them more and like, it's just, been a great opportunity to have Leah here. Um, it really puts a good twist on the way we can engage the community to have there's, a personal artist. Speaking of community, there's a question in, in the chat. How does short duration public art help the community? It's a short duration? Yeah. Um, I think with it being temporary, it keeps people on their toes. <laughs> So, and then there's only an X amount of window for you to go and see this too. So there are people that didn't even get to see the installs yeah. and they're like, what are you talking about? I didn't see these. So it creates a curiosity. Yeah. And that curiosity is going to get people out. It's going to get people asking questions. It's going to get people looking. And, and it is, it's kind of reminds me of the Tibetan sand paintings. You know, the monks work so hard and then all of a sudden psh, they clear it all. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and it's kind of a, kind of a neat practice, you know, and the artist has to let go. You have to surrender the art to all possibilities. And I think that's a good teaching. 
detachment with love. <laughs> mm -hmm, absolutely. <laughs> that was definitely a learning curve, you know, and this is the first time for me that I have had my art so visible to the public. So like I wanted to do it as good as possible, but I also have to keep it in my head. Okay. This is temporary and it's outside. Like I, I got to find a line here. Right? right. I really do. So the, 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 having the short duration too also really taught me how to practice as an artist. Yeah. You know, how many hours am I putting into this? Like I have to be careful, you know, I can't yeah. just burn myself out on one bison. Right. So yeah. the, the short duration I think is an awesome twist. It puts a timeline on a piece of work. You have to just let it go. You, I'm done. I have to do it because I have to get this out. <laughs> mm -hmm. And then, like I said, it keeps the community guessing. Yeah. Any other questions? Yes. Uh, someone would like to know if there is another local artist you would like to work with in the future. I would. I've got a few. <laughs> yeah. I have a few. I love to work with some of the traditional artists. And I love to keep working with the grandmother sewing community. We have a lot of Métis women elders in our community that sew and some up and coming young ladies. And I would really like to grow the skill that's already. And so I've already really trying to get like Bonnie Johnson, people like her who are like, they have so much but they haven't been supported to share it yet. And they have the designs and the skills and years of experience. Mm -hmm. And I'm really trying to pull out this beautiful Métis women's wisdom of sewing in the community. And if I can just keep mentoring, um, being mentored, I'm actually being mentored mm -hmm. by people like Bonnie and some other grandmother sewers. Absolutely. Like yeah. I'm not just mentoring you. I'm, I'm, I'm constantly being mentored also. Mm -hmm. And that's the beauty of this project is it really gets us to share among this community mm -hmm. uh, mentorship model yeah and revive it i think it's important um me as an artist too i really love collaborating i really love doing community based projects and involving my community just so we can all get together and celebrate how beautiful our city is and how we're all interconnected even though it doesn't seem that way sometimes um but not everyone's like that you know and, and i appreciate okay. that too yeah absolutely. totally um absolutely. i think collaborating and working with artists especially me being the, the acting gallery educator at the gallery. Um, I just think it's such an amazing opportunity to see artists come together and work together. Great question. Is that it? Okay. We are done. Thank All you, right. Danny. We did it. Yes, we did it. Um, thank you again, everyone, for joining us today for our final presentation. Thanks, it Peter. feels so great to wrap it up. Thank you so much, Leah. And I'm so excited for what the future has to bring. Totally. Absolutely. <laughs>